Welcome back to Paradise. Hopefully you caught part one where we learned all about native fruit bearing trees, how to kayak, fun facts about the Elizabeth River, and so much more. Up next, we join Jolie McCarr, the Elizabeth River Project's conservation landscape curator, as she continues the tour and fills us in on even more about the work done to transform this once dead zone into a thriving ecosystem. It was a dump site right. for many, many years. Um, when we found this beautiful American elm, elm uh, which is about 130 years old, and so when as we uncovered the beauty of this, the roots of this tree, we found totally. Um, we have found tires in here. It's still a lot of debris. It's, you see, it's in a spectacular health because yes. a lot of the American elms have died due to a disease. From 2008 to 2012, before they opened the park, they planted a lot of natives mm -hmm. as they opened the pass. But it wasn't enough, you know, people mm -hmm. to, even no volunteers took care. Right. So a lot of the invasives overgrow and took, you know, took yeah. over. So we are finding these beautiful niches of native vegetation that was here planted, giving opportunity to other plants to grow. Our rain garden is all planted with natives. You can see some of the pieces of the concrete. Oh, the concrete, yeah. That, you know, they used to dump in here from construction sites or whatever. You uh, had the opportunity to go kayaking today. Mm -hmm. Remember, that area was called the mud flats. It was mud zero. Flats. It was no life in there. It was yeah. completely plane trucks would come through there and play. it was totally dead so it yeah. was no life yeah no habitat for birds yeah after we restored the wetlands restore these niches um plant more natives more native trees we have about 163 species of birds coming through the year to visit us Woo! <laughs> i love that it's, it's amazing can you imagine or could you ever imagine something like this would be out here in p-town i didn't Honestly, I didn't. Flowers in the spring, but then we find out that this beautiful cypress. This is so pretty. The bald cypress. Bald cypress. Oh, we, uh, we plant about four, 10 in five. here. So no, they're not wow. covered over there. Oh, uh, okay. Maybe. So yeah, we are not allowed to use any chemicals in here. Uh, I'm really, really trying to mimic nature the right. best we can. So the privet. So this one? Yes. Okay. That's the bad guy. So every little white thing you see in the top is going to create a berry mm. and they're very fertile and every berry is going to go down and it's going to grow a new tree this tree only going to host one caterpillar so one caterpillar, one caterpillar. so all these birds yeah they have five or six babies mm. these babies need daily between three to five hundred caterpillars three to five so if you only have privet and the birds are having babies everywhere here what are they going to eat it's like it's called food desert yeah for us and yeah. for them yeah so what we plan we plan about 40 beautiful native oaks i love oaks yeah so the oak tree can host up to 600 different types of caterpillars is that's what is the importance of biodiversity mm -hmm. and native plants i love this so those are natives and they and that's that's how all these birds come I'm like yeah. oh now i have food and shelter a buffet there There's you go, a buffet. buffet. Yeah. You want to eat rice for the rest of your life? No, you right. want different stuff, right? So that's what we provide here. So I figured I would go ahead and just turn the camera over to my lovely butterfly because this is her wheelhouse, the butterfly garden. Oh, like making a right? The flower is simple, but these men attract the most crazy um, insects of the world. Okay. Those are wild, man. Isn't that cool? They mm -hmm. look so alien. Yeah. Fennel, and the fennel attract the black swallowtail. Oh, and they're yeah. full of those caterpillars. I love them to touch the leaves. <laughs> 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 this is going to be a persimmon. See, there's rosemary. There you go. Yeah. I like rosemary. Baby so plums. Oh, I see them. I'm wow. telling you, this took six years to then to grow. Gardening is passion. Yeah. It's, uh, we create this maze. Be amazed. Exactly. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, there's a pollinator. So precious little beds. It's oregano. Look at, look at the oregano. We plant all this again five years ago. And look, they took over. Like Coming together. That, that's cone flower. I like the name cone flower. 
And then, of course, in here, we also plant a lot of the um, good natives. They have, we had the blue indigo. Look at the rosemary so big. Here, let me show you my lavender. Everybody loves lavender, yes. Uh, <sighs> so where are we going next? We are going to the playground. Yay! The playground was open in 2019. Okay. Nicholas, so this playground have a lot of art. Work. Yeah. It's all um, natural materials. In this mural here, um, is tell you all the different and, and species of fish and what's happening under the river, right? And then we're going to look at what has happened. What is the reality of Hampton Roads, right? Yeah. What the Elizabeth uh, River touch all these industrial areas. Yeah. It's like the history of the river. You see the past. I see. Yeah. This piece uh, is from. Uh, Black locust okay. is a tree. Black locust. Mm -hmm. And the and the the wood of that tree is very strong. In addition to it being a natural oasis, Paradise Creek Nature Park is also home to some of the Elizabeth River Project's most intensive environmental education programs, including its youth conservation internships. This used to be called the ditch. So we converted this ditch on a fresh water wow. wetlands. We planted about 3,500 native beautiful plants that tolerate this 3,500. Yes. They are so beautiful. We're this. driving in here yeah. 60 miles an hour. But the goal to plant this color is for people to and slow down and see the beauty and relax and that we're here. Soak in a little bit, yes. right? Because yeah. people was so used to just junk. Yeah. I think it'll work. In addition to the great things we've seen outside, there's also a learning lab where you can find a timeline of the project, a classroom, and additional information on workshops and events. I recommend this park for anyone and everyone, but even if you're just looking for a nice little workout, there is a one mile long trail that loops around the entire wetland. It's perfect. There are trees for shade. Come check it out. On that note, it's your boy Jarrell from Namarama. We out.